up to you. Next level print. Welcome. My name is uh, Ebert Markari of the Walter AG. Uh, we're here for the first time and for the first time forming part of the print family uh, of the Comet family. For 18 months we've used the print suit and we've implemented it together with uh, Gaficon and we would like to tell you what we did. Oh, who are we? D do you know us, Walter? When I say Walter, everybody says, oh, you're making the pistols, aren't you? No, we're not making any pistols. We're making tools, industrial tools, threading, turning, drilling, milling tools. And uh, we've done so over 100 years, very successfully so. We now have 4,000 employees worldwide and grow and grow and grow and keep on growing. We are a global player forming part of the Sandvik family, which is um, active in mining uh, worldwide. We are headquartered in Tübingen and uh, um, this is our vision, uh, but everybody needs a vision. This is our vision. Val Walter is uh, the first choice for uh, engineering solutions uh, to cr create success with products. Um, what do we understand by engineering competence? Importance the Z. It doesn't fit the English title, the strap line at all, but that's uh, actually um, referring to our Swabian roots because we come from the Swabian region and competence has, uh, with a Z, has uh, been a buzzword now. Uh, our core business uh, with uh, is done with tools. Um, uh, just imagine these tools uh, are not the tools that you would buy in a DIY store. They're really expensive, and this it is why it's so important to also manage the processes and to offer process safety. Just imagine you have a component, you work on it for four or five weeks, then uh, um, a tool is used that is not appropriate, and it destroys the whole component, and you throw away. A hundred thousand euros. What do we? We actually have uh, milling, we have uh, milling, drilling and all of the services surrounding them. So um, can I use the tools and do some tool management and of course digital solutions. Um, the the CAD CAM designer can actually upload his uh, design and using the 3D model we tell uh, the uh, developer you can use this and that tool costs uh, X euros and this is called uh, Walter InnoTime in our company. And I think that this is very a decisive chart for those who are not in this industry. Where are we strong? Well, in the automotive industry here we have the change from uh, internal combustion engine to complete e-mobility, which means a lot of aluminum. We're very strong in aviation and aerospace. Um, with COVID, uh, we didn't take off too well, but now it's really taking on. Then we're in the energy segment. Since Saturday, no more nuclear power plants. So this is uh, uh, going up. And in medic, uh, general medic, mechanical engineering in Germany, and we're very strong in this field because we have so many mechanical engineering companies here in Germany. Here some um, facts and figures on our publications. We started with Gethicon in 2020, I think. Yes, we started in 2020. And there were five people on site um, representing the Walter company. Yeah, on our side it was three people who looked after the technical part. This was new to us because back in 2020, uh, the completion of the project, the implementation and the workshops uh, were done without having ever met you or seen you. In former times, this would have been impossible, doing a project without having ever uh, looked in Superdee's eyes before. No, it worked fine. Um, then we finally met last year for the first time, thank God, but the project actually uh, proceeded without being able to meet physically. Back then, uh, we wanted to aim at full automation. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Yeah, I love this audience. Now it's fun. 
well, I sold this. Uh, I, there's a, a button and I p press it and then it'll uh, uh, get out fully automatically. And now we have this full automation, but we do not have a single button, but we have many buttons and each employee has his or her own button. But the uh, homework is to be done between the mission and the vision and what can be realized. We cannot automate everything. We cannot automate every shit. Um, uh, if there are things that cannot be automated, then you can't get everything automatic. So you have to kick it out. So this means, I don't know who ever said this in one of the other workshops, preparation is the key. Analyze processes, define processes, break up silos. Even we have our own silos in our departments. Uh, uh, everybody has his or her own hard drive where they save data. Some send out the PDFs to proofread, others actually print them out to do the proofreading. Where are the tasks? All of this needs to be clarified. When we speak about a single uh, source of truth, what does it mean for processes in process terms? The main task was to bring marketing and sales together. Do you have an idea how to do that? How do you, bring, do you bring these two departments together? S by speaking the same language? Mm -hmm. Any other ideas? Gl same systems, very good answer. And actually bring them into one of the same room. Uh, sit them around the table so they talk to each other. Exactly. Distribution and marketing can only be brought together with force. You have to force them to co cooperate. Yeah, lock them up and <laughs> only open the door once they've come to terms. Uh, this was the, the, the ballroom. Um, IT is familiar with this uh, um, uh, topic. Uh, IT needs to be involved, although they don't understand it uh, at the beginning. What we've achieved is 20 publications so far. And uh, I'll start at the bottom with the uh, principal and the partial catalog on the flyers. This is the call, called the highlight flyer. And you can imagine that it only features innovations uh, with, with sales arguments, marketing arguments, uh, uh, very, very commercial, advertising focused. Uh, um, and this was important to us because it was 100% manual. The whole process had been manual. Now it is 100% automated. Apart from the print publication, we've organized a PIM system. Uh, we uh, cooperate with the Steve Step system. And there we have our workflows and processes. This was the first experience for our product managers that they no longer do any proofreading in the PDF, let alone uh, proofread at all, that they actually have to work in the PIM, media neutrally, so to speak. This was totally new to them. This is uh, standardized now. And then there is the main catalog that has 2,400 uh, pages in 15 languages. Uh, it is uh, p published once a year. And uh, we have a partial catalog. This is the innovation catalog that only contains the latest products. And this is also published once a year now in spring. On the 14th of uh, uh, April, it was published. And then we have price lists uh, through all of the price increases. They, they actually are published once, once, once a month. Um, at least it feels like this. This used to be published once a year. What should be um, mentioned uh, when we speak about catalogs, the main catalog we produce is no longer printed. The 2,400 pages we produced, published once a year, is only available as a PDF. So it's not printed um, simply because uh, the resources of three months of uh, presentation, then you actually send five kilos around the world until the client in Japan actually receives the catalog. It's already obsolete. Makes no sense. And uh, this was our brief for this publication. Well, Ibad uh, already said um, before uh, that uh, uh, there were certain there were certain systems SAP, um, then uh, the, the ERP system, Steeple Step, as a PIM MUM system to retrieve the data. 
And since Walter is an international company, the servers uh, range from Holland, Sweden, even to the USA. So decentralized systems and the access both internally and externally were also decentralized. So how can you access the image data when I have an external graphic artist uh, who wants to process uh, it locally or uses InDesign or adapt parts of... So how do you actually involve these employees in the process. This was the task. We used SharePoint uh, to exchange data both from the developer side and from the employee's uh, side. So all of the uh, updates of the templates from the commit system was done via SharePoint and the whole thing was on window, based on Windows through VDIs, for instance, since we did not have direct access to the network. This was an issue. We used to have access to the VPN initially, but uh, in the middle of the project this was changed, and uh, this is what you have to live with. Um, uh, how uh, can IT infrastructure which changes during a project can be embedded? Because this had an impact. Testing, developing, all of the update management had to be redefined in the project because you no longer had direct access to the network, to the VPN. Well, this is what the pages look like that we produce uh, fully automatically now from left uh, classical order pages, which were not so easy with the tables. We didn't think so, but Uli has taught us better. <laughs> um, then towards the center, we've got the classical price lists, nothing really hip. Um, the challenge with the price list was uh, that we didn't have any PIM-based data. They are actually provided by Excel, XMS, uh, and they need to be uploaded. And the next two things, uh, the highlight flyer at the bottom that I already mentioned, with the sales arguments and lots of advertising, and we're relatively proud that uh, this process is now also 100% automatic. So the um, product management goes through one proofreading iteration instead of uh, 25. You should have seen the product manager's face. Found this super. And on the extreme right, you can see program overview pages. This was an invention of ours, well, we broke completely new ground. We said, how can we um, bring web and print together? And we came up with the idea, well, the things that we cannot automate, if they're eliminated, um, uh, then we have to raise the customer's uh, uh, awareness and draw their attention to this. So we included uh, QR codes with a shortcut. The shortcut is what comes says what? Walter Online Catalog and then the product name and you automatically end up in the online catalog on the product page which is highly frequented and then customers uh, can actually find additional information that cannot be uh, called up automatically. You can imagine um, that uh, the uh, uh, sales department was uh, uh, not very high. They wanted to have a printed version now customers say, we well, don't care. This is exactly what we need. So at times you simply have to force people to actually opt for new avenues. And there's also benefit uh, in it for us. What you see on the right hand double page, which does not look too sexy, um, I'm aware of this, but this is 20 product images featured here. This would mean 170 order pages, and I'm saving these 170 order pages with this. And this was also a brief for us. When you look at uh, the uh, left and the right uh, product, um, this was one of the challenges, and I will talk about this a little later. As Ebert said, um, behind one column of this program overview on the right hand side, you, there are six or seven hundred products at times. So there are four to five thousand queries for the database to generate just this one column. And it's about c performance here. So when I have a two and a half thousand uh, catalog, a page catalog, and w when I have over sixty thousand products um, that I have to embed bed and then by a factor of 20 in 15 languages. So certain text information, 
depend uh, on the language. And um, we wanted to see how can we optimize the processes. For the, we did it for the first language and suddenly found out when I multiply this by 23, then I have certain lead times. And with 2,000 pages, the lead times were... Oh, uh, days or weeks. And the point was, how can I optimize these processes, the workflow? How can I reduce this runtime? And uh, I will talk about this um, uh, in more detail, how we did this. And the the desire to have 100% automation was quite a challenge for us when we started the project because... Um, uh, this is a brief, um, well, you know, some things do work, others won't work. And uh, again, we iteratively approach this aim. Uh, we said uh, there's some some quick wins. What do I do in the first step? And how uh, can I actually increase the automation level even further with each further publication to achieve this 100% automation brief? There's certain uh, uh, dynamic pages, but also static pages, such as advertising information or product pages or fillers um, that are uh, automatically have to be embedded in order to get automatic page breaks. Um, then notes are embedded automatically so that my page breaks is in line with the specifications so that uh, certain rules for certain products um, are fulfilled. Some products need to start on the left hand side, for instance, to uh, get the best automation possible. And again, the black change, as we saw for the table stack graphs within the uh, tables. So I need to have it on all of the language levels because in the table, I cannot change the levels or layers. So with long running uh, languages um, if, like French or Korean or Japanese, because of the font size, I need to make sure that I can guarantee a 100% black change. So tables running over three or four pages um, must be in line with the page break in all of the languages. In complex tables on the left hand side we saw an order page. Especially when you talk about uh, page breaks in several languages. Generating a table uh, across 10 pages with InDesign with many cells, up to 10,000 cells on the 10 pages. Copying into the first language is, takes 9 minutes. Uh, copying into the second language it takes 40 minutes. To the third language it takes 3 hours and 17 minutes. So extrapolate this to 20 languages. The other point is to reduce the InDesign effect. Um, so how can my language version tables uh, be realized uh, in a performant way? This is uh, times in design that uh, puts up obstacles here and you have to see how you can actually work around these. And what we said before, the strong reduction in the program overview is to just have one column but uh, which actually corresponds to 170 pages in the order catalog. So how can this flood of data be optimized in such a fashion that my publication is output in an optimized way? Add to this, uh, uh, there was a new PIM system introduced. Uh, uh, let me refer to this as uh, structural data structures. Oh, God. Um, we had uh, adapted it. The following week, uh, it had to be adapted again. You have to adapt the interface so you have access to the same data. But this is also an advantage. When you say, well, for certain queries, uh, I need certain data and fields or boxes, and um, they are com actually compiled or optimized in PIM, then, of course, I can introduce it into the product set. So it was um, uh, vice and virtue at the same time, this introduction of the new PIM system. Uh, we used the new interface GraphQL to actually export the data from PIM. 
very complex data structures with hundreds of variants per article because it really has certain lengths, different diameters, and all of these uh, variants or versions were compiled in one main product, but each uh, variant needs to be queried uh, in order to show man, min and maximum values in tables. And this, of course, is a tremendous amount of work to optimize the uh, interface queries. Um, we should mention at this point here that uh, we have between 400 and 600 attributes for each product. And we're speaking of 45,000 standard products here. On the other hand, we had a very tight time plan. Walter said, we would like to have the first tasks ready by then. Please identify the quick wins. And um, they wanted to produce with a reduced extent, um, then learning with the team and through new processes and with new workflows through Commit. There are, of course, things that I need to adapt at internally. And this is uh, uh, how we actually implemented it uh, various, uh, through various steps. Catalogs uh, with uh, over 250 files when you use the InDesign server. So this is generated by the InDesign server with uh, up to 12 instances right now. Especially when you use this maximum number of files uh, that are not easy to handle with the InDesign server, um, this poses, of course, challenges for us. How can I do the pagination, the index, uh, um, which is not so easy to do? We have JavaScript and the InDesign server, the, which were combined with the Comet plugins in order to handle bigger files uh, uh, productively and uh, speedily. And last but not least, as you just said, COVID, there were no face-to-face uh, -face workshops or meetings, which, considering the size of the project, was was a first time and uh, therefore actually posed us with a challenge in the implementation. Exactly. The implementation was very agile, which was new to us because we're engineering. Uh, we're an engineering company. Um, there is no proof of uh, concept. There's no agile working. Engineers want to actually put out the perfect thing, but this wasn't possible to do. We had to be agile. We use the Pareto principle, which reads 80-20. I invest 20% uh, of my energy and get 80% of the benefit. Um, the, I roll it on to the uh, uh, to the road to the street. IT people know this, but for our engineers, it was new. Oh, it doesn't still work, and it's uh, already going live, uh, and although it's not working. And uh, we also followed the Eisenhower principle. So we have features, we have extensions, they're planned, they come in, but you can also see when you work with the Comet and when you work with the InDesign server, well, I would like to have this and extension because never forget, this is graphic artists who worked with the InDesign for 20 years, even with Quark Express, and, they now, and you now say, well, this, uh, this machine does it automatically now, and they say, yes, they do it automatically now, but then they realize, well, it's cool, it really works. I could build in this process or that process, and this is what we then did. It makes sure to build confidence in the system for employees, because without the employees, forget it. And this is what we achieved with the, uh, by applying the Eisenhower principle. Uh, many extensions were implemented, in-house extensions were implemented, but which was also important was set priorities. What can be achieved until the next release and what can't be uh, achieved and how do we handle this? Uh, so, uh, instead of saying we want it all, then let's see what works out. For us, it was the clearly defined milestones that you said. You had predefined what, but the sequence, what was to come when and how, this was extremely flexible, building on the results we achieved in the uh, first step. So, we redefined targets even for, for step uh, two, because uh, you realize, well, now I can proceed faster on that path. Um, and this is why we will do this now, which was originally unplanned. So we were very dynamic in the implementation to achieve the target. The following Monday, um, uh, what we said the Monday before was history very often because we realized now we have to focus on something else. So it was very creative and agile. This was enormously... Um, 
challenging for our team. And uh, this will also be one of the topics, uh, uh, the communication within the team and between uh, ourselves as the service provider and you as a company. We found that communication is tremendously important. And the, considering all of the, the foreign languages, um, we focused on one language logic. We started with one language, set down the rules, implement the rules, and then the delta regarding the foreign languages was dealt with. How do I handle longer running uh, languages? Uh, how do I handle font sizes? How do I have to optimize to really make sure I get the black change um, and actually use the page break that are used for language one for all of the other languages as well? And as often, time is money. The optimizations we did, the optimizations that we did after the first catalog, after the first publication, we looked what needs still to be done manually, where can these manual steps be reduced, when I, how can I automate them even better. Are there things that are probably overlooked the first time that I need for the second step? And this is how even now we have ongoing optimization because the, the number of publications is growing, the types of publications are increasing, there are more people using or accessing the data because it's browser-based um, uh, uh, or cloud-based and how can they generate their own content. Um, I have PIM data and I generate my data as, a, as, a, as the PM so the marketing team no longer has to ask anybody else. So I can actually involve many more employees actively in the system. In terms of the print side, there's certain uh, or there, there's many information available in PIM that was adapted, but not all of this information can really be managed via the PIM, uh, the, the data that I need specifically for the COMED. So the uh, parameters uh, um, were used that I can actually use in the, uh, they're good. On the other hand, when I have our hierarchical document structures, they are slightly problematic in terms of uh, um, uh, in the heritage aspects. So in the third and fourth step, we wrote our own API. So I can actually get a catalog in the publication planner and all of the parameters are introduced into an Excel spreadsheet and I can manage them there. And then I can actually send back the publication planner to um, uh, the Excel sheet into the uh, print uh, uh, planning. Uh, we have up to th 30 parameters that I can actually manage in the InDesign spreadsheet. Um, then instead of having to do it in separately 250 times, uh, for the publication planner, especially when I have to do it for, when I have to change a parameter in 250 files, then uh, it takes a lot of time. And this is why we developed the API uh, so that I can export this information uh, from the planner as an sp Excel spreadsheet. Uh, do you actually have uh, to uh, accreditate any data in the Stebo uh, for print? Well, uh, we had the possibility in PIM, of course, the p publication had to be generated for the COMET specifically, but then we had to manage something in addition for each specific publication. But in actual fact, we have really tried to keep as much out of the PIM because we say media neutral and it's about a catalog here, we're speaking of PDFs. Comment of the mic. That's difficult, says the speaker. But yeah, it worked, it worked, yes, pretty well. You have to strictly separate matters. This is media neutral and we'll include it. And then the discussion starts. What about uh, the power of two uh, for formula? Well, you can really clash with your data experts. They want it in um, and uh, we say, no, uh, it's wrong. Or we strike a compromise or we create a rule or a policy to be able to process us such text. So um, when you discuss it, uh, you have to be really tough. No, we, it's eliminating. We live by this rule. Now the colleague has to solve it on the web somehow. Correctly, yes. And this is the danger that you're 
actually uh, um, intrigued to do it in PIM, but probably the PIM has a longer half time than the other systems. And um, it's a good solution. As you said, where do I need the logic? Do I really have the logic specifically for my print channel? Makes it sense? To, does it make sense to keep them out of the PIM? Or do I have other logics? Uh, how do I compile products? So do I have a management structure or an export structure so that other products um, from various areas are combined in one task structure? And then I probably need information at this node that I need in both web and for print or not only for the web shop, but also on web website. And then say, uh, I'll take the information out of PIM and push it over to the print system. This is the big benefit of having the GraphQL interface. And this may vary from customer to customer and from publication to publication. But you have the flexibility to either work with the Excel API, um, this uh, facilitates uh, data management and maintaining uh, of the parameter data, or have the data in the PIM if I really need this data for several channels. You mentioned 600 to 800 attributes per product. Mm -hmm. The question is, uh, is this faster when I already have it broken down in the PIM system? Or do I decide later? Uh, isn't this a question of speed? Yes, uh, you have to test it. You have to try it out. Does it make sense to do to get 800 products and I need 10 attributes per product? Do I do the 800 queries uh, uh, for this or do I do 8,000 queries and, and use the interface? This is the question. How quick, how fast is the interface and how fast can I process it? This is what we felt. You cannot answer this up front. You have to test it out. Exactly. This is workflow and processes. When I know that when I print the, uh, press the button and I do it at uh, eight o'clock in the morning and it takes uh, three hours, then I shouldn't complain at uh, 11 a.m. when I can't do anything else. Why don't I do it in the afternoon at 4.30 and then leave the office? Yeah, I did the same thing. Uh, I actually came back to the office at 8.30 p.m. or 20, uh, 10.30 p.m. to see whether it's finished. These are the first steps how to approach such a project. And the beauty, um, the parallelization of processes was important. Very often uh, mentioned translations. This is very important to us. Why? Are you experienced with translations? Ah, that's good to see. When you uh, actually have a translation in InDesign or PDF files and you get an offer and you have to release it, I bet when you look at the invoice and you look at the individual items, then only 10 to 15 percent account is accounted for by the, uh, by the translation. Um, the rest is handling over 500 pages and opening a design or whatever. 80 percent are not even accounted for by the translation. Why? What for? We have to eliminate this. Such a project costs money, time is money, and um, when you do so many translations, then you can actually amortize very quickly. A 2,500 page catalog used to last uh, nine months, now it's completed in four weeks, complete with translations. What has changed? What has changed is that um, we've only got sales uh, saying we want to print out, no longer the product management and uh, the sales department. Because the product managers um, have to learn to confide the system. They used to be over text with all of the proofreading. And when we shorten the time frame, uh, what, what, what's the benefit? Well, we're speaking about personalization. Print will always be the trigger to uh, uh, attach or attract attention, the AIDA principle. You need to actually generate attention. And for this purpose, print is great, but personalization means you need resources. When people are only busy with price lists, then you can't personalize. You don't get your act together. 
And as we said before, InDesign is InDesign. For some things, uh, you have to find the right workaround and how to deal with unexpected crashes and how certain things can be um, optimized tables, tasks, uh, or the black change optimization. So we've invested many days and nights uh, in testing. Some uh, th processes last for 12 hours and you, you, do, you can't foresee the result. For us, it was an extreme challenge that I think we mastered pretty well together with Walter. So the end results plus everything else in the pipeline, that's a good fit. And this is the result of our efforts. We now have all of the versions of the publications that we're what well, we want, that we wanted to have. Maybe there's more in the pipeline. Maybe you know. I don't know. But uh, we have uh, performed all of the uh, tasks successfully with the translations, with the languages. Again, we applied the Pareto principle there. So we were always looking at uh, the the export of the template in version uh, to. Word 1.0 is uh, almost 20 years ago, and they're still embedding new features, so we'll have to wait and see. And this is what uh, keeps us on our toes now, the fine-tuning. How can the optimizations improve even further? Uh, simplify the use because at times I do have certain browser surfaces or UIs uh, uh, that uh, are not intuitive for users. How can I make it even more user-friendly to involve even more users in, in, in using this system? Well, lessons learned. What have we learned? What have you learned? Uh, there are certain rules, uh, uh, things that have to go wrong, have to go wrong. This is Murphy's Law. Both sides, uh, especially in such big projects, and it has become a big project, both sides uh, have to show flexible um, uh, flexible approach. We spent many evenings and nights on telephone calls uh, to really get the result we wanted. And if uh, there are problems occurring, and they're always occurring, how do I come up with constructive solutions for both sides mutually? Always with a focus on the positive uh, target and uh, how do I overcome the problems on, on the way? There are certain things you can't plan beforehand, but then you have to create a level of playing field and honestly say, well, this could not be planned, it could not be foreseen, and you always strike a compromise. You find a middle ground that is mutually uh, acceptable. And from our side, we can only say uh, the customer that really lives a project and actively shapes, co-shapes the project is, is wonderful. Um, task us, drive us, but also be prepared to rethink processes, adapt processes, and invest in new processes and integrate in new systems. Because we come from the other side and probably don't have this idea. So it is really valuable to tap into the customer's ideas. This was an extremely positive experience we acquired in this project. InDesign is like a, a car. Stroke space can only be replaced by more stroke space. And instances can only be replaced by instances if, if we're talking about performance. Uh, we started with four instances, then realized the more people use the system in parallel, the more parallel instances we need. If I have, I have requirements for the hardware, I have requirements for my pre-systems, upstream systems. The GraphQL, when I have 10 times the, the queries, how does the system handle these? Do I get the feedback in an adequate amount of time so that uh, what I've invested uh, up front is is really uh, exported sufficiently. These are empirical things that we learned, lessons we learned. Important to mention, um, you need people who know to work with InDesign, who really master this tool. If they don't master this tool, then they can't give you feedback. And if you don't have a feedback, you can't improve matters. And it's really important uh, to have a customer who really co-shapes the product and people who are experienced. Um, 
that their colleagues have the uh, uh, experiences. It's clear that you that, that that your provider has the experience, yeah. Uh, but when you ha don't have the experience at, at the customers, then you have cases where you say, "Well, I want a car," and and they delivered a Trabi, but they thought of a Porsche, or then a Porsche tractor is delivered. You have to tell the developer what is the speed, what is the distance you want to cover. Do you want to go in snow and rain? This is important to specify the definitions, and with uh, core. Um, projects can be realized. Cool. We met you in uh, 2020. We met Comet in 2020. We saw Cool. Um, it works with InDesign. As finally, somebody who speaks about InDesign instead of coordinates. This is what uh, our um, engineers can, can understand. And we're really happy. And that was it. Time for questions. Uh, well, uh, what is what is the time of to iteratively? We did it. Uh, we implemented it in the first six months. This was May 2020 to uh, September October 2020. This was the first uh, realization or implementation step for a relatively small extent. Then we found we encountered problems with the language. And then in April 21, in April 21, we had the first version on the road with languages, but there was a small catalog, only 500 pages. And then we had the 2,500 page catalog last autumn. This was tough. This was a tough, a rough ride. Just imagine, we produced the catalog eight times before we actually did it properly once. <laughs> Comment off the mic. We have a page uh, catalog system where we save the PDF. We established, don't, don't be annoyed with me, but I have a print background, and we established that um, the difference between a web and a print uh, version is only 5%. The print version, the web version is basically the, the waste of print. Uh, to be perfectly honest. Although we know that we won't print it out, all of our, our, our prints are printable. They would be printable. Or for like people for, with aerospace, they'd insist on having the catalog. What did you do with the QR codes? I found this very interesting when you mentioned this before. Um, to use it as a bridge to online. Could you measure the success? How many customers use this? Yes, surprisingly many did. For the current catalog issued right now, we even uh, added a campaign code so that we can measure it even better and break it down even better because we saw the figures and thought, wow, oof, it is being used. We were able to break it down for the individual products, but we couldn't break it down for the uh, publications. And this is why we, I think, is my kettle. Yeah, it is the former kettle. In the QR codes, uh, since they're a compilation of many products, um, um, and they uh, they were established completely dynamically, and this QR code is then actually generated uh, uh, dynamically in Comet because the grouping is of course not known beforehand in the PIM system. This is why the QR code is really generated in InDesign for Comet um, at the, for the runtime specifically and then exported. You mentioned that the catalogs are not printed up or would be printable. How do you deal with the page size? Um, well, thank you very much for this question. Before we uh, started uh, with um, uh, the Comet, we had a hub uh, focused. Uh, we got pages and we did not know how many pages we would have in the catalog the until the very end. You, you, since we've had the uh, Comet, we established this and we, of course, make sure that we get the 16 or 4 page uh, breaks and um, with image pages and notes pages. Uh, but with some projects where you know that you will never have it printed, that can have nine pages. Is this a standard function? We have no, no, no. Uh, if you say we need, we have to fit it into 3,000 pages. Well, we have five different uh, product segments and they're clustered in three sub-segments. Then we structure it once and then the products are fed in. Mm, uh, we have uh, 
250 files. This is generated once. Then we run the script and then we end up with the page uh, number. We look uh, with the indexes and active registers and uh, look at the grid to be used for the catalog and then automatically we fill the pages um, uh, at the beginning of the chapters or, chapters or at the end of the chapters to achieve the uh, page grid. And if, if 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 it doesn't fit it, we we we'll, we'll, uh, eliminate it. Yeah, very strictly, it's out. Well then, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Thank you,